You know what time of the week it is. It's time for more Sun and Moon in you. Today, I got some very funny series. This first series, we are going to see the Evergar special, really, where this Miss Magius goes absolutely berserk. I... This mod is scary. I still think it's underrated in the tier somehow. Even though we've raised on the VR lately, Miss Magius continues to just prove that it is one of the best Pokemon in the format. And yeah, very, very scary. And then the next one, I, I gotta show off my man Lucario. You know why? <laughs> because he brought Robbie a team said, I have to live vicariously through the man using my squad. He said he needed something for rain. I said, here you go. <laughs> Here's a Gorbis. <laughs> ah, nice Gorbis. Nice swim, swim. Nice shell smash under the rain. There's no rain here, but hey, no problem. You know what else there isn't? 100% uh, subscription rate to the channel. Now, our channel, we got about 50% of the viewers watching that are subscribed. So if you're part of that 50%, especially if you're still listening, that's not yet gotten subscribed, go ahead and do that right now, please. We get, da we get daily Pokemon content out here. I know you like it. That's why you're watching. So, support the channel. Help me hit my end-of-the-year goal of 10k subs. I will respect you and love you for a long time. Now, game one. And Django in this game, of course, th this is a sample team, I believe. It is a Finch's SD Gallade build. It is a good squad. However, there is a certain Pokemon that can run this build down. We had not really much needed, I'm going to be honest. Um, Mr. Pengoro? So, here's the reality of this build. Pengoro does... Goro, in the reality of Pengoro and Inu, I'll go for first. Doesn't really have defensive checks. There are mons that can, of course, offensive pressure really well, that's why it's not banned. Because the mon's really slow, even on Django's team. There's a Gallade that's going to be faster, there's an Aerodactyl that's going to be faster. Hell, there's an Incineroar that's going to be faster. But in terms of actually answering this with a defensive stop, there's nothing. You've got some mons in the tier that are okay at doing it, like Garbodor and Weezing and even Victory Bell, for example. They're okay. But, one, they're not in this game, and two, they're not very good at it anyway. So, it's a very scary mon to queue into, and when you've got a team like Django's where there are a couple Pokemon that give this mon some of the freest setup possible, it's a little bleak, especially with how Epigar constructed this team. So, one thing that I think is always really, really good in these Pursuit generations is taking into account how common choice-locked Pursuit Trappers are, and how can you exploit that. For example, look at Evie's team. She's got the Miss Magius, and this mon is a Pursuit Magnet. <laughs> Aerodactyl is one of the most common Pokemon in the tier at answering Miss Magius because you can just pursue trap it and remove it from the game. So how do you answer that? Well, put a Pangoro on your team that is quad resistant to the pursuit, will not care if that Aerodactyl tries using it again for god knows what reason, that is a free sword stance, and I'm here to tell you, this mod gets an SD on this team? Um, all you really need for Goro to break this team in half is... Enough chip on Gallade to where plus two bullet punch smokes it. And even then, you might not need that depending on if you're Choppleberry. So, I'm gonna get into this now. Incineroar is led with versus the Dreadagon. Incineroar a pretty good lead here. There's not, you know, Dread's not a bad check, but it's definitely vulnerable to getting blown up. And Django just sword stances and then knocks. I mean, this is just a very easy amount of progress to make turn one. This is pretty useful as well because you got Gallade brought out. And even though he CC'd into Delmise, he correctly analyzes that Shattered Psyche here is good, and that the Delmise would not be the Z-Crystal user. When you got a Miss Magus on a team, it's like 99.9% .9 of the time going to be the holder, so he knows he can stay and hit this for a million. And just already by turn 5, he's made a ton of progress. Drud's almost gone, Delmise is gone. Token Tomorrow will be the answer here. You get a U-turn always on the Steelix that's coming out. This lets you bring out Pangoro if you want. Drud, though, ends up being the option here, as if Igar wants to get her Stealth Rock up and just try and, you know, get a little bit of ground. She's not, like, in the hole, but, you know, there is a little bit of progress that he's made back up. Now, you'll see these Earthquake trades here. Of course, there's nothing to switch into here anyway to try and preserve Drud. But the Earthquake chip is... God, I can't speak. The Earthquake chip is very useful and necessary because you want to make sure the Steelix is in range of your Miss Magus later on. Also, I think it's kind of funny that uh, she went for detail there. I 100% just DQ'd, but it is what it is. Spagius out comes out, 
And this is in range of the Ghost DMZ here. You watch his gate just obliterated. Very nice. His arrow comes out now. And you will always see protect on this because, hey, protection's good. You should be using it, kids. And to scout out the pursuit, just to make sure that that is what it's locking into, had she, not he, had Django, he gone for like a stone edge, then maybe you see Token Amaru flexed in. Although even then, I, there may be a world where the Goro is... Mm, no, I, I don't think you want to let Goro take that much chip. Anyhow, now you get some chip on Arrow. It, this just, of course, ensures that you can take it out with like a Goro bullet punch or a Togedomaru even, like, U-turn. <laughs> Is the Goro now come in and you are going to see that panda difference. So Pangoro comes out, sword stances up, and please... And another SD2, just for good measure, to make sure everything's gone. Risking a burn or a crit or something. And now this Bangora will simply win. There's nothing to even narrate here. The Gallade is outsped by Bullet Punch. Bop, bop, bop. Good night, Gallade. Oh, you thought Delmise took this hit? It's not Colber, Berry friend. Bunk. Oh, it is Colber. It just dies through Colber. My bad. <laughs> Couldn't tell. <laughs> ah, Sloking. Yeah, this will surely take the hit. Oh, nope, it died. And then Aerodactyl comes back out and gets KO'd by the Stealth Rock on entry. Truly just elite gameplay. And then you see this core working exactly how it was intended to work. This mage just baiting in the arrow to lock into Pursuit, giving Goro free sword stance. And once you had enough chip on Gallade, once again, the Gallade's really the one thing you needed some bullet punch chip on. Maybe Arrow needed a minor amount. I don't know the calc off my head, but I feel like it gets one shot by plus two bullet punch anyway. But yeah. As you got the chip on this mod, it was just wraps. Really nothing left that Django could do. <laughs> um, although, I will say, there was technically an out based on set. Like we said as well, I, I don't know if the second sword stance was even needed. It may have been the one-shot the Delm through Culber. But, had Insen gotten like a Blitz Burn or a crit, or even just been superpower on Incineroar, you sometimes see that because it helps more versus opposing Incense. It's, I mean, stronger than EQ. And it'll do more to Guzzlord than any other attack you've got. If it had been Superpower in Cinnor, maybe there was a chance. Even that, though, would have come down to whether or not this Pangora was Choppleberry versus, like, Lumberry. Very good game one. And in game two, once again, she's using this Mega Bombasnow build. And it's just a beautiful matchup. <laughs> now, Jago's using the uh, Specs Sigil with Tinted Lens sample team this time around by QZL. And... Yeah, I... Oh god, I would hate to load that team into this build. A couple reasons. One, T-Spike. T-Spike's kind of annoying. You have a Delmize, yes. But you still have a lot of mons in your team that don't want to deal with T-Spike. And Delm is your sole way of dealing with it in response isn't great. You kind of have to play super aggressive with your Sigilyph in this kind of matchup. And just try to dissuade T-Spike from ever being set as best you can. If you're able to do that, it's a little bit more playable. If you're not, it can get dangerous very, very quickly. Not unplayable, but it's rough. Why is the other reason that this team is kind of rough, though, for J Django? Well, the Miss Magus. I told you this is a Miss Magus video. <laughs> At least at the start of it is. I don't remember if the other games have anything to do with Miss Magus. Don't think they do. But look at Django's team and look at this Miss Magus. Now look at Django's team again and look at this Miss Magus. It's kind of another angle where the Mon just has a naturally very easy time putting in work. Less likely to find, like, the super easiest plot turn, because, like, what are you setting up on? It, it's Seismitoted and nothing else, really, right? I mean, Delm's gonna obliterate you if you waste a turn setting up. Comfy, you just don't really want to try and trade set up with. Incineroar, lol. Lamau, even. Um, Togodomaru, not setting up on you. And Sigilyph, yeah, it's Specs. This is tapping you on the forehead and you're getting thrown a hundred kilometers to the right so not very good but even just you don't even need to set up this game depending on set i, I do want to throw a caveat in there because if you're not power gem incineroar is obviously going to be able to check you pretty well but again and the name of this game is t-spike if you're able to get them up and keep them up Ms. Magus with the support of hail evil. And we see Incineroar as the lead, and then, yeah, Bevy does the same thing I believe she did in round one. Literally lead wheezing and just set a T-spike up. 
Because you're not going to go immediately into Delm here because it's just not a good trade. You're not going to be able to beat the Weezing 1v1 and you're going to get super smoked. So, the Tinted Lid Sigilif comes out and just beats down Evies. <laughs> <laughs> very easily. Uh, that, yeah, so Spec Sigil, very good. You don't see this set as much anymore. You're just a lot easier to revenge kill, and since you don't have a magic card, you get put into range of pursuits from, like, Sneasel and Arrow, even if you're staying in very, very easily. But Dawn comes out. Sword Sensing up, predicting the Delmize, of course, to come out. You, I think you do one-shot it sometimes at plus two, at least. Maybe it's always. I don't remember. <laughs> Instead, the Seismitoad's what comes out, but Evie's pretty alright with this, because it gives her Mega Obama Snow. And you're just trying to weaken this Incineroar. Again, if you're not Power Gym, then you need Roar Weakened. So getting it poisoned is good. Forcing it to take all of this passive chip in one turn is incredible. You already have it almost at half, getting close to having to activate its berry. And now, with Dawn out, you can throw up rocks, you can Stone Edge here, you have a lot of good options. So, you turn from the Incineroar comes out, Delms the switch in. As, let's see, rocks do get set. Now, you'd love to spin block with Miss Magus, but of course this is kind of scary to spin block. So instead, Evie just stays in, not wanting to risk, you know, rapid spin not being what comes out. Instead, now Miss Magus is able to come out easily, of course, deterring a rapid spin at this point. I mean, you want to preserve the Delm. And we just get some chip on the Incineroar, and you'll see this is just able to slowly get whittled down. Now, if she had Power Gem, I believe she would have used it. Unfortunately, you can see here, by burning your Z-move, you are saying, yeah, I don't have Power Gym. So, a little unfortunate after never-ending nightmare there, but it's not like the end of the world. As now the Toad comes out, as I said, there is one Mon on this whole team <laughs> that lets Miss Magus set up. And unfortunately, Django did not analyze properly that this was the one, like, completely losing route he had. There were other routes that weren't good. Such as going Sigil or Delmize, where they would have just died to Shadow Ball. And even Comfy wouldn't have been the greatest, but although that's maybe a little better. You don't really want to give Weezing, though, a free in, or even Togue. I think you always go Togue there. And he gave this a plot. He goes for Scald, hoping for a burn. He doesn't get it. And now you have to sacrifice something else. <laughs> um, it's okay, okay, you can go Togue here. So Togemaru comes out. Um, so this is going to protect and just Scott. Hey, yeah, um... So this is also something you're kind of not allowed to do here. So you know it's Protect, because it revealed earlier, and you, you kind of are just forced into attacking it. I, I frankly just don't remember if Zing Zap kills, but you have to put it in range at least of your, like, Comfy, right? I know there's a Togo Tomaru on this team. You don't want to give it a free switch in on, like, your Zing or Iron Head. But you kind of have to. You lose the entire game kind of to Miss Mages here if you don't try and force it out. So sometimes, you don't want to overthink the turns. Mons isn't a game where you have to outplay your opponent every turn. You turn is never going to outplay them when they're Protect Miss Mages. So now, you have to sack another Mon. Okay, maybe it's not the end of the world still. Delmize, alright, well, wasn't like the most necessary Mon here. Now, now I can go back to Togemaru. I can just Zing Zap, and it's fine. You know, we got a little bit of extra chip even on this. So maybe the U-turn even? I I'll give him this. I mean, you know what? I'll even I'll even pause real quick. We'll be right back. So I'll even give you this. He needed U-turn chip on this to make sure it died to Zing Zap. I just don't know if this was Wild Charge or not. That that's really it. <laughs> so U-turn there is a fine play. I, I I will give him that. Upon second look, U-turn is in fact a fine play to go for. Part of me says I would have still gone comfy instead for chip, but it, it's kind of arbitrary there. So, there you go. Know, you know what, Django? Right play. Right play. I should have calculated before I said that. <laughs> so, yeah, he U turns out, make sure he has enough chip on this to where Zing can kill. But that's also why I like Wild Charge on this one so much. Now we see a great double switch here. Um, Unfortunate that Togue's what came out. It's great as in, I think Obama Snow was a fair enough Mon to expect. But the problem is, it's, it's never really coming out. The. I don't, great double switch, except this play is never happening. Nah, but I, I get it. He, he was predicting this. And, and crit there is kind of whatever. The game was very over. And we can just skip turns now. The Weezing will simply support this game. Yeah, it just gets killed. Um, but yeah, I think the play versus Miss Magus may have been... I don't know. I'm trying to think if it was worth it to Zing anyway and just hope for a flinch. 
Is it worth having to sack so many mons on your team there? Because I think definitely going Sigil on the Togedomaru was rough. You kind of have to expect this to be the mon, but at the same time, I think what he was hoping for was just positioning, where he's okay to sack the Sigil, and then maybe he gets to go and get set up somehow. It's pretty rough. Because as y'all saw, you know, this comes, gets obliterated by Zing, and then he goes comfy. Basically, he was just playing to maybe comfy can clean from here if I force the Togue to KO my Sigil. So I think he's saying, all right, this maybe if switches because it doesn't want to get killed by HP ground because then there's like a vague chance that my Togedomaru can flinch the entire team. It just doesn't end up working like that because of the crit pretty quickly. But I, I think I can see the vision that Django had there. Anyhow, next here's the Kara versus Avarice. Avarice using an Eternally team that is double banded. Unless, again, there could be edits, but I remember Bandit Arrow, Bandit Goro. Of course, Life Orb Combine Uncomfy. And in Defensive, Defensive, Defensive. This team. This is Lead Rock Strud with uh, Taunt EQ Glare. This is Dual Screen Zatu. This is, I think, Ghost DMZ on the Gorbis. This is a Power Trip Incineroar. Shift Gear, Magnet Rise, Cling Cling with Frustration instead of Wild Charge. And in Combine Life Orb Comfy, but with Hidden Power Fire. Now, I don't remember the reason I made it Fire. At the time, there's a chance that I was thinking about Eternally's team that he spams all the time that it has a Pharaoh Seed. And I think my logic was, hey, Kling Kling can't beat Pharaoh Seed, so let's make sure that Comfy at least can chunk Pharaoh Seed for it. <laughs> um, from preview, this is not the best matchup for Lucario, and that's most because the Aerodactyl's a little annoying, but it's not unplayable by any stretch of imagination. You have ways, of course, of beating this team down. Gorbis could go crazy, but you're seeing the reason that Shell Smash Gorbis is just not used. And that's Comfy. Comfy is very, very common. It's very easy to run in this type of matchup where your Gorbis isn't going to do anything. So, you got to try and get rid of it earlier, and odds are your opponent won't just give you Comfy. So, it turns into more of a game of like, all right. Can I at least get some chip on it, maybe? And then, you know, maybe that opens up the game for my own Comfy, so I don't have to go into this terrible Calm Mind War later on. Or maybe Incineroar, then, can um ease more easily, like, set up and not care about a Hidden Power Ground picking it off. Those are the thoughts that I would have coming into this game. I think your win con, if you're Lucario, is probably, though, the Incineroar. Because, you know, it's bulk up Flame Charge. So, if you can get rid of Stoys... I feel like that's something you can play to potentially, just eventually outspeeding the arrow. Like, say you get rid of Stoys and then um, maybe you force a switch from something as you bulk, and then if like Gore is what comes out, you could flame charge twice maybe and KO it? No, I don't know. Those are like what I'm thinking through. Anyhow, we see arrow led, and then it's an or lead. My guess here, by the way, too, because I saw the um, I saw this and I was like, why are we leading in Sinor? We have a Sash Dread. But I think the logic was okay. Drud's a pretty likely lead from me. They may lead Comfy, so I lead Drud. Or I lead Ensign because maybe they don't want to 1v1 me, something like that. But Drud comes out, gets crit immediately. In theory, you're still two shot anyway, but there's, you know, just in case you weren't, there's a Justice Dodge. <laughs> His rocks go up. I don't even think it's like that big of a miss because Stoys spins very easily versus this team. And see, Avarice staying with Stone Edge there, not going immediately into one of Stoys or Steelix. Just trying to get a little bit of chip. You may need it for Comfy later. So, pretty fair. As it looks, comes out here. And you don't know the set. The issues could be if it's like Roar or Curse. Because Magnet Rise Kling Kling is targeted very specifically at defeating like Dual Stabs plus Toxic Steelix. Or Protect Toxic Steelix. Those two sets just cannot touch you. At least not consistently enough. So... This could beat down this entire team quite easily, but you don't know yet what this thing's about, so you still want to switch. And since you have the Zatu, it's like very, very free to go into it here anyway, and just get your dual screens going. So, Reflect is set, Light Screen will be set next turn, and you can look for a U-turn maybe as the Stoys comes out. As yes, the Crybaby Pokemon does come out. <laughs> but yeah, it's just a free U into like maybe Comfy, I guess, Gorb. I probably would never go Comfy here, just as an aside. 
They're just gonna have Toxic. Comfy could win this game for you. Especially with this thing sturdy broken. It's just one of those like benchmarks you need to hit. You need more damage than just 3%, right? Sweet, but yeah, you need to break the sturdy first anyway. Maybe you could crit it. Things like that. I'm going through my head if I'm playing this game out of Zakaria. But is this still a free calm mind? And if you're just trying to break with Comfy, I think it's okay. Uh, for example, some of the thought process from Lucario might be, I know I keep pausing, my bad, but some of the thought process may be, for example, that you're hoping they go Steelix here instead of Victory Bell, and then you could get Chip on this, and then, like, Kling Clang wins. The only problem with that thought process is Victory Bell's always coming out here. See? Look, it's right here. And the reason for that is you don't need to go Steelix. You want to keep Steelix because the Victory Bell is just far less useful. So, Victory is sacked. As the arrow now can come out, it doesn't die to plus two. And you can go for Stone Edge. And you're just kind of trying to force it to die to the toxic damage at this point. You won't be able to get enough recovery at this point with how low that is to out-sustain both passive forms of damage now. So you survive the Comfy matchup. Now, your own Comfy comes out here. Zatu's going to try to set screens, though you can double Calm Mind here pretty safely. Potentially triple Calm Mind. Instead, they go for a D-Kiss there, before the light screen is set. Just trying to get some extra chip on the Zatu, so that, it, you know, you can actually KO it. Because you're never actually, like, winning that exchange if you double Calm Mind. Like, Zatu will tank the next one and U-turn. And you'd much rather KO the Zatu instead of letting it do that. So now, once again, the Lix comes out. And the Clanger shifts gears. And this time, Lucario says, no, I no longer switch. I don't care about you. <laughs> Goes around Magnet Rise as a Toxic comes out. Obviously, Avarice predicting that the Clanger just was going to switch. Didn't happen. Double shift gear has been obtained, and look how angry he gets. Ka-chow! Look at that, 51. Able to do enough to two-shot if there's no lefties. There always are, but imagine there weren't. <laughs> and he does get a favorable roll, just to make sure. Very nicely done. Now the Goro comes out here, and all you got to do is land. Unfortunately, this Clig Clang did not wear its glasses to work today. So, um, the Goro lives to see another day. Incineroar is now the response, and you may think this game's over. I mean, right, this is a fighting type versus an Incineroar. And the Gorbis can't ever win because there's a Comfy. Crazy. It's obscene. Um, bulks up. Tanks that hit very easily. Gets the policy. And, yeah, Dream Punch. <laughs> ah, you love to see it, man. Now, there's a Steelix. Still a Sturdy intact. Only taking 50 from Drain is some evil stuff, by the way. But unfortunately for the Steelix, it just doesn't do enough with the Quake. Power Trip now does enough damage with all the boosts that you have to take out the Steelix. And Comfy's not going to be able to KO an Incineroar from this range when it has no boosts. So, Power Trip Incineroar, man. I'm putting a lot of work this game. Uh, very, just a nice little clean up at the end game. And now I get this game. And hey, I built this team too. Though, I also feel like 50 other people have built this team in this gen. So maybe I'm, you know, maybe I'm not that special. But, if it is my team, and I think it is, it's Nasty Plot Beginium Z on Sloking. Banded Arrow, Standard Steelix. I don't remember what variation of Standard Steelix it is, but it's Standard Steelix. Defensive Victory Bell, Scarf Passimian, and then Defog Rotom with an Ayapapa Berry. Now, what's the nasty matchup here? Surely not a terrible thing, though the Mismagius can be a little scary. As you see, the team doesn't have any Ghost Resist. So you are very reliant on your Pursuit Arrow and then, like, Scarf Pass to try and limit it as best you can. And uh, it's not the greatest, because if you Protect, you just always scout around both of them. It's really, like, a matter of, are, again, are you able to get the Z, for example, to hit Arrow? If you are, then I think the Miss Magius super smashes this team. If not, eh, it's still not bad for you, but it becomes harder because Aerodactyl then is a lot scarier to face. The Passimian, I'm just kind of never worried about if I'm using this team. Because you just, again, if you're this little Miss Mage, you just protect, and then the Weezer comes out. Weezing in general is not the... It, I was gonna say it's, like, really annoying. It's not that annoying, but it's kind of obnoxious because your switchins, none of them really take it on that well. Licks can get burned. King doesn't want to get poisoned, necessarily. Same with Rotom. And a Victory Bell is kind of just a do-nothing matchup versus it. You both just kind of trade the most pathetic of moves. But from preview, I do think the arrow is pretty key. You just have to try your best to not get smashed by his Miss Magius. 
as we see the wheezing lead basically just trying to say hey i don't want to lose to this loking i'm gonna try to get t spikes up early t spikes are set also punishes the um lead of either of these fast physical attackers pretty decently so there's that too as we get the burn though on the wheezing on lucario here just playing it very very safely at the start you know t spike set i defog it away and then i bolt switch and you don't have to overthink this kind of early turn as king comes out new and incineroar this is a very funny switch in because it should never be swapped in like that but it doesn't matter z crystal lane being bulky means you tank it and then even expertly scouting the energy ball with enough hp to be regained just through slack and regen to tank it now here i really like the play the car made he got punished for it by missing sleep powder but I do like that he acknowledged he could live the hit. Even, I believe he lives the Z as well. I, th I think it does like roughly half or roughly double. But he does end up getting Steelix brought in on Continental Crush. I'm a little amazed that the Z was burned there. But at the same time, I'm not. Because you know, he just didn't want to get slept. So, went for the kill on this. Unfortunately, Licks came out kind of tough. So, and yeah, we see Daddy now. And Daddy's angry. Daddy's home. He's got the belt. Unfortunately, the belt is just Stealth Rocks in... Okay. <laughs> the Victor Bell saps, though, on the Miss Mages here. You can go for another Sleep Powder here. So we see a very good double switch by Avarice there to bring out the Whimsicott to block it. Now the Psychic's likely to come out, but there's always a Steelix. As long as the Steelix is healthy, you're never worried about Whimsicott. It just isn't beating anything. And Steelix can go for, like, a Curse, could Roar. You got a couple options there. So looking, though, doubled. So we see Lucario, all right, he has a double switch, too. So the King comes out and plots. And his T-Spike won't really matter that much, either, because you've got Victory and this guy levitating. Like, T-Spike hits an entire two Pokemon. So you're not that worried about it ever being said, because you've got the methods to play around it. But King takes that Sludge Bomb very nicely. Gets the KO on the Weezer. This opens up the game a bit more for both of Passimian and Aerodactyl. The Weezing was a check to at least both of them there. Is the victory now just absorbing the T-Spike? And you do see you're almost in two-shot range from Whimsy, but not quite. I think Sleep Powder there would have been a good play, by the way, because I don't think this is ever staying in. But, you know, maybe Lucario predicting Sap to not heal enough to push him out of two at KO range. So Miss Magius, though, swapped in on the Sludge. And Steelix able to tank the Shadow Ball rather well. And out of stories is allowed in. Toxic obtained, but it will be refreshed away later on. You could try to block with Rotom here. Although we see another double switch here out of Avarice on the Protect. The unfortunate reality, though, is you're not, you know, you have nothing to threaten this with. <laughs> so the car is able to kind of just keep the Steelix out here. And you're seeing what Steelix always does this gen, where you just leave it out and it just doesn't die. <laughs> it just stays around forever, man. Doing absolutely nothing. It's very funny. So Rotom gets off a little defog there as the spin into the Rotom doesn't matter. They've just traded away entry hazards basically. As now the Steelix tanks the Wisp. Now this Rotom can just throw off a Hex if you want. Instead he goes Victory Bell here as the Steelix ups. And this will probably just give you again Whimsicott or Miss Magus. So the Missy comes out. I think I probably would have Leaf Stormed here personally. Because you get a good amount of chip here. You KO this. Incineroar probably isn't coming out, and even if it does, I'm not really concerned about it. But we see the sap, and once again, this does tank a Shadow Ball. You do get the KO on the Missy, so it's pretty decent for you at that point. So Whimsicott will now try and come out and Revenge Kill. I would have probably sacked Victory there, but it literally doesn't matter. I mean, you, Steelix can wall this too. And Steelix is really only here at this point too to check the Whimsy. Stoys is able to come out, absorb a Toxic. Throw off a Scald if you want. Throw off a Refresh if you want. You got a couple options here. Scald is chosen. Gets a nice little crit too with a burn. Unfortunately, the you know, the Robes I Papa. So, annoying that you burned the berry this early. But, you're back to a lot of health. And now Incineroar will be the option. Volt, though, is coming out if you really... Okay, I was going to say Volt's coming out because it's like super free here. <laughs> but, Defog is fine too. It's, the, it's like the way to play this game as safe as possible. Now the Volt comes out, because yeah, you don't have to overthink it with the Fog. As Aerodactyl comes out, now you get free Earthquakes. Very nice. That Flare Blitz did a million, though. I do not like that. <laughs> but yeah, now the Steelix comes out. Takes 500,000 from Earthquake. Very, very nicely done. You are two-shotting. As Avarice drops this message in chat, and in forfeits. Yeah. 
I think it's very funny, by the way, too, that Lucario then waited a little bit more to make his move. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, you know, maybe maybe I'm just not as good at Sun and Moon as I think I am. Maybe I don't know the meta as well as I do, but I'm going to be honest. This, these were not 100-0 to zero matchups. I don't believe that for one moment. But, hey, Mons is Mons. Sometimes people get pissed off. It happens. I, I'm i sure Avarice feels fine now. But this was, this was some fun games. I was going to cover Eternally's games, by the way. You know what? Let's cover them. Give me a moment. I'll bring them back up. So, yeah, you know, why not bring up and why not show Eternally's games? Um, I wasn't going to because they were very short. They were very short. Um, not through any misplays from Medea, by the way. This is one of the, like, worst series, though, I've ever seen in terms of, like, very unfortunately timed hacks. And, I mean, it's, again, it's Mons. It's kind of an accepted thing that'll happen when we play it. But, you know, it always stings a little more when it's a tournament. But, game one, I see a Sigilyph over here, and I look at this team, and I go, wow, this is one of the most well-prepped for Sigilyph teams ever. And by that, I mean you've got Fastermon and you have Pursuit. So, the base guy, you always prep for Sigil. Um, I, I feel like Eternally showed me something he was considering with this team before. Some of the Mons seem similar. Um, the Sigil of Set is a reminiscent of Black and White, though, time, which is very fun. Got a little Psycho Shift action going on. And Medea, Dean, again, if I'm going to point out any problem with this team, it's that you're sinning too much. You've brought two ship Mons. What's a Quillfish doing here? What's a Decidui doing? Get these Mons out of here. Scram. Just get, get, get this bum out of here. So, Quillfish is kind of worthless here. Like, he just like one of the most useless times you could have one. Because you're not going to do anything versus this. It doesn't have flip turn this gen, so I don't get momentum ever. You know, Bar Barrage, so I don't get to use that move. It just has nothing. But, you know, it's just, I have so little to say at this preview. Oddly enough, it's not, so I don't think it was Sword Stance to Sid this game. And I apologize if you hear the dogs. They have decided it's time to be loud. But, this is like, God, I can't even think. I'm pausing. All right, they've decided to stop. So, this is one of those games where if it was Sword Stance to Sid, it actually was pretty decent. You still have to deal with the sneeze a little bit, but otherwise, I mean, it's actually a really decent angle for it. <laughs> but on Medea's side, I do like the Sigil still, even if it's well prepped for on this team. It's kind of just still a good mon. If you're, you know, you're able to get your boosts going, a little scary. And you also always have to accommodate, or not accommodate, but consider those cosmic power sets, which can always be a bit more annoying for something like Sneasel or Token of Mar to Revenge Kill. They just become very, very bulky. And then it's it's tough. And yeah, let's get into this. Yeah, I'll see Medea. I'm out a little bit. That'll be key later on. But you can turn crit turn one, not too worrying. If I'm if I'm Medea, I just don't care. <laughs> as Yama comes out, allows this quillfish in this terrible, terrible Pokemon. Eternally will not convince me that Quillfish is good. Simply won't. But Medea will get an early spike. And you may look at Eternally's team and think there's no Defogger, but rest assured, <laughs> there is this very sinister Defogger here. Because if you see a little Air Slash 2 to just punish just Sid for staying in. How dare you? How dare you? See, so Sidor now forced out, also forced to take some Air Slash Chip. You see, Sigilyph just making momentum. They call him King. As Yama comes out, you see this Hariyama. No item removed. This is Z-Move Hariyama. Now, when I was at preview, I had absolutely no clue what the Z would be. The only Z crystal I've seen Yama run in this gen is Z Belly Drum. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't really think it'd be Z Drum on this type of team. I just don't think you have the, uh, breaking power to support it. But, may maybe it is. Who knows? Anyhow, Sigil switched out as the token Mario came in. Steelix comes out to block that. You can throw up rocks here. Try and just get a nice edge in the Hazards War. Sigilyph is what comes out once again. You're forced into its sin here, because you don't want to let Steelix take the Psycho Shift. And the Sigil is the Fogger. <laughs> the Defog Sigilyph, man. It's beautiful. Takes a million from this knock, too, by the way. Can't even get its burn back now, so if Sigil ever Psycho Shifts, that's it. That's the last time. Very sad. Quill comes back out versus this Yama, though, as we see a turn with a very beautiful double. Just so you can get something like that little Rooster Roost. 
Don't want to let your sigil lift go down too early, especially when you're facing hazard stack. You need to make sure that it's kept around because, hey, I don't want to lose my defogger. I don't want to get overwhelmed by all these spikes and these rocks. That's horrible. Now we see that the Sid switch back into the Toad. Rocks go up. This could actually be defogged to Sid as well based on seeing you turn and roost. Kind of just being used as a panic move if you need to remove your hazards. Personally, I think I'd still prefer Delmize here, but is what it is. Lix takes the knock very, very easily. We want to sit again and see those rocks come up. This time, though, Medea not wanting to let Incineroar take even more rocks chip as you see Hollow has already gotten. She stays in, lets the Steelix get that burn. As now Sigil comes out on that weak, weak, weak air slash. Very weak, very pathetic, very just terrible. <laughs> also, you can see this is a heat wave with Calm Mind, which is a little bit of a deviation from a lot of the Calm Mind sigils we've seen lately that were always like stored power air slash. Anyhow. Steelix comes out, blocks that little zing zap. And fortunately for Medea, this mana is getting weakened very, very quickly with all the passive chip. But it should be okay. Very smart of her to continuously use her Sigilith as a switch into Eternalies as well, since this can't really do anything. Again, you see this air, air slash is nothing. And this will get KO'd by rocks, so you don't have to worry about that switching in. So you get the roost here going. Hariyama's an easy KO as you see the mist right here. The Hariyama surrounds itself with Z power and goes for Z knockoff. And that's not half the game, that is the whole game. I would forfeit too, because let's be honest, there's nothing on this team left that can actually make progress. That air slash miss sucked. Now, you still had Sneasel to revenge kill you potentially, but Eternally has to get a 50-50 right on Pursuit versus Knock. That's not guaranteed. But yeah, I mean, from here, it's like, is Passimian cleaning versus this? Not, not really. Is, is Defog to Sigilite? No. No. No, no, yeah. I mean, Sigil going down like that costs the entire game. And now we get this game, where Eternally has loaded up this stupid, stupid Pharisee team for probably the 97th time. Not, not historically, 97th time this year, by the way. Um, he loves this team. It works really well. Everyone that uses this team seems to win with it. Nobody seems to care that this team keeps being brought. They just are happy to lose to it repeatedly. This is why I passed a team with HP Fire Comfy. I'm not letting, I'm not letting someone that asked me for a team get Pharaoh seated. Hell no. <laughs> but this is a very funny game because Pharaoh Seed actually just lives rent free in the team's head. Five of the six mons hate Pharaoh Seed. The Metacham is the only way of dealing with Seed. And the problem is, Metachams are, you know, it can be a um, proactive play. It may be if it's off a of Volt Switch or double, but a lot of times it's going to be reactive, where Medea's bringing out the Metacham as the Pharaoh Seed's already come out the wall, you know, one of the five other mons on the team. And as it's switching in, Pharaoh Seed is maybe Leech Seeding, it's maybe setting a Spike, maybe it's getting a T-Wave, maybe it's knocking. There's a, It has so many ways of just making progress versus its team without really being punished for it. And, as per usual, when we see a comfy on the team, we must then analyze the other team and say, Is this game already over from preview because of the comfy? The answer, eh, not really, but potentially. Hidden Power Ground Comfy is demonic here, but I'm pretty sure this is fire on this team. I'm sure he, I'm sure Eternally changes the Hidden Power type game by game basis, just how he, based on how he's feeling that day. But, Hidden Power Ground Comfy definitely could beat this team down. I look at this build and I feel like it should be physically defensive Garbodor because otherwise you kind of get run down by Passimian a little bit. Like Earthquake Pass is very very evil to face. Although you're gonna see based on a Draining Kiss damage roll that I'm not actually too sure that this is this is Fizda. Also why else do I love Comfy? I just want to mention this. Heliolisk this game synergizes super nicely with it because you're gonna be able to draw this guy out get some H voice chip and pretty quickly you'll see Steelix put in range of Hidden Power Ground. So, pretty good. And we see both people lead off with Heliolisk, and both people also decide, yes, I will H voice here. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Wait, I didn't even notice this. the badge appears when you're playing Gen 7 in you. That's weird. Anyhow, <laughs> we see both players trade H voices turn one, though Eternally is, he is a wuss. He switches out on the second one, but you're seeing exactly what I was talking about at preview. Metacham has to react to the Pharaoh suit switching in, and a spike went up. 
And so now Garbodor comes out. Of course, you don't want to get instant beat by Comfy. But yeah, 11%. I don't know, man. Is that is that specially defensive or fizz def? I don't know. <laughs> but once again, Pharaoh Seed comes out. Now I get to do whatever. And besides here, a double is smarter. Because the odds are Medea wants to try and just trade the spikes there. So Eternally does not allow her to. As the Zatu now crits the Blastoise very, very quickly. Grass knots it on the follow-up because this set's pretty, pretty good. And the spin is just going to cause you to die to Helmet. And this game is over. Y'all enjoyed. See you next time.